our world has never been what it seems to be. Our plane of existence is only one of many. Some call them worlds, others dimensions. These planes of existence that can occupy the same space-time are separate from each other, making it impossible for beings of one dimension to travel to the other. But while the exact nature of our reality is truly unknown, one thing is clear. There exists a powerful entity that has been watching our world for eons, trying to find a way to breach the invisible barriers that separate the dimensions in order to reshape and restart our reality. While humans have kept busy with their day-to-day -day life, only recognizing what they can see with their own eyes, a select group of people have known about the true nature of our reality and have passed this knowledge from generation to generation. One of these secret groups resided in a village in the outskirts of Africa, where the inhabitants not only know about this mysterious being, but have worshipped it as the god of destruction and rebirth. Their prophecies, which have been passed from generation to the next, foretell a time when this powerful entity will breach to our universe in order to restart the world. This massive event is said to be precluded by many signs. One of them is the appearance of the Amplified Spectres and the Crucible of Souls. The Amplified Spectres, seen by many as ghosts, are visual manifestations of physical events that are happening in the different parallel universes. While these spectres or illusions might seem erratic, there are select few who have the power to control the spectres. These few human beings, who can be seen as conduits between realms, are also sometimes referred to as the amplified spectres. The beings are believed to be the crucible of souls that connects all universes and convergence of all possibilities in the multiverse. The Amplified Spectres are not meant for our plane of existence, but it has been told that a massive disturbance in space-time can lead to the appearance of both the Spectres and their conduits. Events such as the sacrifice of Ash Crimson, which for a limited time broke the fabric of space-time. The knowledge of the Crucible of Souls and the Amplified Spectres remained very controlled between one generation to the other. In recent times, only one person who dedicated her life to understanding this ultimate reality truly understood the importance and weight of the prophecies, and how the power of the Amplified Spectres could even revive the dead. The Hermit was known as Dolores. Unfortunately, due to a freak and unexplained accident, Dolores met her demise, buried under the sand in her own home. Rumors would continue to spread about individuals born with strange abilities or surrounded by unexplained events. One such person was born in a remote mountain village in China. While overjoyed with their newborn, the parents of the boy, named Shune, would witness bizarre occurrences when Shune would cry or have a tantrum. This would cause furniture to fall down on its own, walls to crack, and the earth would shake. Even animals would become distressed in Shune's presence. What was initially happiness turned into worry and sadness, as the parents did not know what is truly happening to their child. The village kids around Shune's age would fear the toddler and refuse to play with him. While feeling lost, the couple were visited by the man known as Tong Furu. Tong is a master of the deadly martial arts of Hakyuku Seiken, who previously trained many strong fighters like Terry and Andy Bogard, as well as their father before them and the crime lord of Southtown, Geese Howard. Feeling the immense power that young Shune had within him, Tong, who has heard stories about the boy, Ask the parents to allow him to raise the child in order to help him control his powers. In order to not interfere with the long and hard training and what is needed to control this mysterious power, the couple agreed to Master Tongue's request to not interfere with the child's upbringing and to hide their existence from him. Thus Shune would be told that he was abandoned and that his parents are unknown. Years would go by during which Master Tong would add another student, 
Mei Teng Kun, who also shows incredible power that requires him to sleep the majority of his days. Mei Teng Kun and Shunei quickly became close friends and rivals. While Shunei seemed to respond well to Master Tang's teachings, he remained unable to control his powers, which surprisingly have a personality of their own. These powers of unknown origins will often cause Shune and whisper to him asking him to lose control and destroy everything. In order to help him focus and control these destructive urges, Tang Furu gave Shune bands to wrap around his arms and headphones to use for blocking out these ominous whispers. It had been now years since the last King of Fighters tournament, which, unknown to everyone, ended with Ash Crimson erasing himself from existence and from everyone's memory. But it seems that the tournament is too popular to not make a comeback. Soon enough, a self-proclaimed original King of Fighters champion Antonov decides to host a new edition of the King of Fighters. Antonov would use the resources of his company to make this new iteration very special. Invitations were then sent to fighters around the world to be part of the event's comeback. Many old and new warriors are set to show their skills on the world stage once again. Antonov would then sponsor his own official team. The Russian CEO first sought an underground fighting legend that had incredible electrifying powers. Known as Sylvie Pola Pola, the young girl was one of Nest's secret experiments that was free from the evil organization's control after it collapsed. The second fighter is a master of the Sichuan Opera Dancing, who then became a known street fighter in order to earn her living and that of her family, Mian. The third member was a mysterious hooded man who approached Antonov to be in his team. The mysterious figure is known as Kukri, and his past and motives were shrouded in mystery. One of the invited fighters for this new King of Fighters is none other than Tang Furu himself. Seeing that the tournament could be the perfect place to test his students' years of practice, the Hakyuku Seiken Master forms a team with Shunei and Mei Teng Kun and officially enters the competition as Team China, hoping that having Shunei meet with other fighters who struggled to contain their hidden powers would help him control his. Among the fighters invited was of course the ex-King of Fighters champion Kyo Kusanagi. While initially uninterested in participating, Kyo's father Saishu informed his son that he has been having an ominous feeling that something or someone is trying to interfere with the Orochi seal once again, which led Saishu to ask Kyo to team up with his old friends and team members Benimaru Nikaido and Goro Daimon and enter the competition anticipating that whoever is responsible for this negative energy would surely use the next KOF for their own plans. Saishu also informed Kyo that he had received a request from Master Tang Furu for Kyo to test Shunei's abilities himself. Thus Kyo, Benimaru and Goro once again joined forces to enter the new King of Fighters tournament as Team Japan. On the other side of town, Iori Yagami, who now has recovered his missing powers after the King of Fighters 13, is visited by none other than the mysterious Hakeshu members, Vice and Mature. Having previously been killed by Iori himself, these two undead women came to inform Iori that a convergence of the dead, drawn by life, is at hand. Without explaining their cryptic warning, the two devilish women handed Iori an invitation to the new King of Fighters tournament. While most fighters form their team and to enter the tournament for their personal reasons or seeking glory, Haider, the leader of the mercenary group known as the Ikari Warriors, ordered his squad to enter the event in order to monitor the activity around the new tournament. As recent anomalies in space-time have been reported around the world, coupled with the rise in activity of remnant cells of the defunct Ness organization, Haider felt that the new King of Fighters could be the perfect opportunity of an evil entity to use for their devious goals, and thus Leona, Raf, and Clark embarked on a journey to participate in KOF once more. The space-time anomalies were not only detected by Hydern and his advanced military technology. The spirit of nature, the maiden known as Nakururu, once sacrificed her own life to protect the world, 
felt the disturbance and the emergence of an evil entity whom she calls Waikamu could be at hand. Nakururu defied space and time to keep a close look on the tournament. And thus, the King of Fighters tournament took place. Warriors from all over the world faced each other as the world enjoyed the return of the global 3 vs 3 competition. The young Shune and his team fought many battles, which made the young fighter understand his powers even more. And made him more confident that he indeed can eventually control them. His team would eventually lose to Kyo's Japan team before reaching the finals. Speaking of finals, it was Team Japan who reached the grand final to fight against Antonov for the belt and title of the new King of Fighters champion. But as usual, a massive event took place. The strange space-time anomalies witnessed by many have all converged and led to the appearance of a strange being in the sky. Causing the destruction of the tournament venue, this entity, muttering the words verse, seemed to have a direct connection to Shune's mysterious powers, as Shune felt that he started losing control of his. All the fighters were stumped about the appearance of this mysterious being with the exception of one fighter who seems to know exactly what is happening, Kukri, watching from the sides in anticipation of what verse houses within its fiery being. Nakururu, the nature maiden, appeared before the heroes and explained the grave danger this entity poses and that it needs to be stopped. Shune, along with the other heroes, battled this mysterious being. Upon its defeat, the entity called Verse exploded, releasing waves of energy around the globe. It seemed that the mystery of Verse ended before fully starting, making many fighters question what this appearance even mean. But those who know about this foretold event, like Kukri, knew that Verse was a space-time anomaly that somehow engulfed the souls of many deceased warriors. The energy it released when exploded were actually the souls of these long-gone warriors, which now will be resurrected. Shune and the heroes were unsure of what exactly happened, but soon enough, reports of some previously deceased warriors reappearing started making the rounds. Immediately, Hydran and his squad started locating who these warriors were. Kukri, on the other hand, hoped that one of the resurrected fighters is his master, Dolores. It turned out, Kukri studied Ender and was adopted by Dolores when he was a young child. When his sand powers manifested for the first time, he lost control and almost was buried under them. Dolores then sacrificed her own life, saving Kukri from Ender the Sand. Ever since, Kukri lost his innocence and lived a bitter life, blaming himself for the death of his adoptive mother. When noticing the space-time anomalies, 
and realizing the verse prophecy is taking shape, he hoped that verse will also have the soul of his master Dolores. After verse's explosion, Kukui followed the whereabouts of one of these fleeting souls, hoping it would be Dolores's. However, upon arrival to the resurrection site, he did not find his master, but an unexpected fighter, Ash Crimson. Realizing who the unconscious kid is, Kukri decided to contact Elizabeth Blanktorch, who since Ash erasing himself from existence, have felt that something is missing and was looking for the answer. Ash Crimson was not the only resurrected warrior that was identified. Both Kyo and Iori received a message from Chizuru Kagura, informing them that Orochi has also been resurrected. The three fighters met in Europe where they found the spirit of a resurrected Orochi struggling to stay in a physical form as it does not have a proper body to truly resurrect. Determined to stop a second coming of Orochi, the three sacred treasures once again used their combined powers to successfully seal Orochi. The experience of his very first King of Fighters gave the young Shunei the confidence in dealing and hopefully one day controlling his own powers. Seeing fighters like Leona or Yuri who dealt with their own demons made Shunei feel that he is not alone in his struggles. While he did not win the tournament and he did not fully understand the origin of his powers, both he, Mei Tenkun and Tang Furu realized that whatever verse was is only the beginning of what is to come. Following the fight with Verse, Shunei's nightmares grew out of control. An eerie voice would often call him in his dreams ordering him to destroy the world. Not long after, Tang Furu would receive an invitation to a new tournament, now sponsored by the mysterious Anastasia as Antonov's been fired from his company and had fled to form his own wrestling organization GWA. Tang Furu then surprised his students by revealing that he is not participating and that he asked Kyoku Sanagi to join Shunei and Mei Tenkun and form a new team. The Hakyuku Seiken master then ordered his students to head to Japan and get ready for this next tournament. After arriving to Japan, Shunei and Mei Tenkun were greeted by Beni Maroni Kaido, revealed to them that he will be their teammate as Kyo is busy investigating something ominous along with Shizuru Kagura and Iori Yagami. Following the verse incident few months ago, many previously dead fighters have returned. Among the resurrected warriors was the hermit Dolores, Kukri's adoptive mother. But instead of finding Kukri, Dolores' first task after she was brought back was to find Hydern. Dolores understood that the fact that she is now alive is a sign that the prophecies she was taught are all coming true. Dolores explained to Hydern the urgency of the matter at hand and asked him to help her find a special girl, one that has control over her amplified spectrum. Seeing that a King of Fighters tournament has been announced, Hydern asked Dolores to join him for this event, as they both expected that the tournament coupled with Shunei's participation will probably trigger the return of the entity seen in the last tournament. Both Hydern and Dolores head to South America, specifically to an orphanage in Chile, where a young girl, Isla, has shown her mastery of an amplified spectre. Since a young age, Isla has lived in the orphanage and grew up to distrust and hate adults who pretend to know her well-being better than her. Over time, Isla has built a special relationship with the Amplified Spectre, and unlike Shunei, she seems to have a mutual understanding with this entity whom she calls Amanda. When asked by Hydern and Dolores to join their team for the next King of Fighters, Isla quickly agreed after learning that Shunei is participating as well. During the events of the King of Fighters 14, Isla watched Shunei on TV and felt hatred towards him, he who has similar powers to her and seemed to have embraced his surrounding world and has friends around him helping him overcome his hardships. Isla, along with Hydern and Dolores, formed the rival team. In the other corner of the world, Ash, now alive again, was asked by Elizabeth to join her for the tournament. The reasons for entering the event is to force Ash to fix what he started due to his sacrifice. 
Shinyuverse was just the beginning of the anomalies and felt that the tournament will be the place for more to be revealed. Ash and Betty are joined by Kukri, who at the time did not know Dolores has been revived, though he quickly learned the truth when a special broadcast was announcing the new teams for the King of Fighters 15. Furious at his former master, Kukri is looking forward to the new event in order to confront his adoptive mother. Besides Ash and Dolores, many other fighters were brought back to life. These include four members of the Hakeshu, Yashiro, Chris, and Shermi. The three warriors that perished during the events of the King of Fighters 97 when resurrecting Orochi, as well as their leader, Genets. Genets was previously defeated at the end of the King of Fighters 96 and took his own life. While initially not understanding how they were revived, the Orochi team, along with Genets, are hell-bent on using this opportunity to revive Orochi. Yashiro, Chris, and Shermi also entered the tournament. More teams from around the world have officially joined the event. Some include traditional formations like the Fero Fury team with Terry, Andy, and Joe, and others banding together for the first time, like the Super Heroine team of Athena, Yuri, and Mai. This new tournament also happens to be the first one since the King of Fighters 97 where single entries were permitted. Many fighters received single invitations to join the event, like Shingo Yabuki, Kim Kapwon, Duolon, Hinako, and the mysterious Najd. Najd is a Saudi crime fighter who uses her special abaya that is originally a jinn to fight evil. Her unknown master ordered her to investigate the space-time anomalies and to find the resurrected Dolores. Right before the start of the King of Fighters 15, as the teams are getting ready to enter the tournament venue, Shune, along with Mei Tenkun, were stopped by Isla, who verbally attacked Shune and called him a loser for relying on adults to guide him. Shune was surprised to see Isla having the same powers but was more puzzled about the animosity this young girl had against him. The King of Fighters 15 tournament has begun, as the world watches in anticipation the high level of all the teams as they battle for the title of Grand Champions. Many individuals were waiting to seize the right opportunity presented by this global event in order to push their own agendas. During the tournament, Dolores, while inspecting the venue, confirmed to Hydern that the tournament is the perfect channel for heated clash of fiery wills that should provide enough energy for Verse to rematerialize once again. Dolores then explained that through the teachings passed down from ancient times, the bean is actually called Reverse. She then went on to explain that the bean was never meant to visit this world but Ash Crimson's incident caused a distortion in the space-time between worlds, allowing the creature to appear. Dolores made it clear that she believed those with the powers of amplified spectrum, like Shune and Isla, if they work together, can seal the entity, something Isla did not appreciate and promised to defeat Shune, then destroy Reverse herself. But Dolores explained that Reverse cannot be destroyed, and the only way is to return the bean to its home world. Following more exciting matches, the hero team of Shune, Mei Tenkun, and Benimaru reached the finals against the rival team. The match that Isla was looking forward to was finally at hand. Shune and Isla battled, and so did their amplified spectrum. In the end, it was Team Hero that won the King of Fighters 15 tournament. But right before the celebration, Isla seemed to be unable to control her powers. It seems that something unseen is interfering with Amanda, and in a matter of seconds, our heroes found themselves in a similar but different location, where no other human is present. As if they were sucked to a parallel dimension, Isla, overwhelmed by her powers, lost consciousness and went deep into her past memories. Shune also felt the place's incredible power interfering with his, but with the support of his teammates, was able to not lose control.
Dolores then explained to the heroes that both Isla and Shune are amplified spectres and bearer of powers that resonate with Reavers. Both the fighters act as mediums to amplify emotions that are used by the entity. Because Isla excelled at absorbing people's intense emotions and amplifying them, her spirit and that of Amanda intertwined with verses, allowing the entity to materialize once again, bringing the heroes into a parallel dimension. Defeat in reverse is the only way to free Isla. Shune and the other heroes would then take on the mysterious reverse. <laughs> After an intense battle, reverse was defeated and Isla regained consciousness once again. But before the heroes could celebrate, Dolores felt the coming of the mother goddess of truth and restoration, Otoma Raga, the same entity that was worshipped by Dolores' ancestors for centuries. Feeling the immense power of Otoma Raga, Dolores shocked the heroes by revealing that the only way of sealing Otoma Raga within her original resting place out of this world is the co-annihilation between Otoma Raga and an amplified specter, which means either Shune or Isla will need to sacrifice their lives in order to save the world. Refusing to believe the legend, Shune, Isla and the rest of the fighters took on the powerful entity. An intense and scary battle took place. The power of the amplified spectres combined with the sheer will and strength of the fighters was enough to defeat Otoma Raga. Her defeat opened the doorway to a void known as the complete nothingness. Anything that goes through the void is nullified, including time and space. But before the entity disappeared into the place of no return, Otoma Raga grabbed Isla and tried taking her to the other dimension with her. In an instant, Shune jumped for Isla's rescue, and while initially unable to hold on to Isla, both their specters reached to each other and pulled Isla out of the vortex that took Otoma Raga back to her resting place. With Otoma Raga defeated, the heroes were transported back to their original dimension. It seems the world is saved, but this encounter may have brought more questions than answers. Shune, on the other hand, was finally able to control his powers, and for the first time in years, was able to remove the headphones that were used to help him control the specter. The whole event made Isla realize that Shune is not her enemy and she saw the error in her ways of thinking, and how in reality she was jealous of Shune who had friends and people protecting him, unlike her, who with the exception of Amanda, grew up alone with no love or compassion from the outside world. Following the events of the King of Fighters 15, the hero team went back to China, where Master Tang Furu, after congratulating the team for their achievement, decided to reveal the truth about Shune's parents and how they are still alive. Shune, who wants to see his parents, decided to first travel with Mei Tenkun alone to face the world, a decision welcomed by Tang Furu. As for Isla, Haydn proposed that she join his Ikari unit, but the graffiti fighter decided against the idea and wanted to go and see Shune one more time before returning home. Her teammate Dolores has finally been reunited with Kukri, who blamed her for everything before the two reconciled and decided to go back to their hometown. The Ikari warriors continued to locate the resurrected warriors, and it seems that Gaidel, Leona's father, could be one of these revived fighters. Leona, Ralph and Clark decided to go and locate a man that seems to match Gaidel's description. 
The Sacred Treasure team made of Kyo, Shizuru and Yori were finally able to confirm that the Seal of Orochi is now safe. After Otome's defeat, energy that interfered with the seal is no longer felt by Kagura. Now Kyo and Iori can finally have the last battle they have been longing for. But whether the seal of Orochi is truly safe remains to be seen. Resurrected Hakeshu, Yashiro, Chris, and Shermi, along with their leader Genets, are still hellbent on reviving the deity, and they feel that now is the perfect time to do so. Several hours after the defeat of Reverse and Otomaraga, all the graffiti anomalies have stabilized one after the other. Sitting in his desk, Hydern decided to think of the shocking truth he learned from Dolores. It seems that Reverse appears at the end of the world to collect the souls of warriors for a greater deity, Otomaraga. The powerful emotions in souls are converted to pure energy to open a gate to another dimension. For Otomaraga to enter and erase that world before restoring it to a new one. But it seems the reason why Reverse and Otomaraga were awakened in the first place is something no one expected. It seemed that this world is part of a multiverse, where worlds diverged on the crossroads of choice. The retro casualty that took place when Ash erased himself and thus causing the past of his ancestor's psyche to disappear was a branching point for another universe. Whether the threat of Otomaraga and deities such as her are no longer present remains to be seen, and whether this was the end or maybe just the beginning of dealing with a multiverse full of possibilities is a question that we do not know the answer yet. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, check the history of the King of Fighters, the history of Fatal Fury as well as other SNK lore and documentaries on Neo Geo Now. Big shout out to my channel's patrons for helping making this possible. You can become a patron through Patreon or a premium subscriber here on YouTube by clicking on the join button below this video. Patrons and paid members get early access, exclusive goodies and more. Link is in the description below.